That was Ballata No. 2 by Francesco Filidei. Francesco Filidei was born in Pisa. He graduated from the Luigi Cherubini Conservatory in Florence and from the Conservatoire National Supérieur de Musique et de Danse de Paris. He has been invited to participate in major contemporary music festivals internationally. He has also been played with a number of world-class orchestras, including WDR, SWR, RSO Wien, ORT, RAI, the Tokyo Philharmonic, Bayerische Rundfunk, La Verdi, and many more. In 2005, Philippe received a commission from Comité de Lecteur IRCA. He has received awards, including the uh, 2006 Salzburg Musik for the Preisträger. In 2016, he was named Chevalier de Art et de Lettres by the French Ministry of Culture. His latest opera, L'Inondation, with book by Joël Pomerat, was composed for the 2019 season at Opera Comique in Paris. Filidei's works are published by Rai, Com and Ricardi. Francesco Filidei, thank you very much for doing the interview. Um, my first encounter with your music was in one of our class concerts. It was the Ballata No. 2, uh, and um, the piece uh, stood quite uniquely apart from other compositions of the evening. And I was trying to figure out what is it that makes it so. Um, you have another piece in which three performers uh, play a piano occasionally by sitting on the keys, which makes a beautiful color, but also a curious performative scene. So um, I guess my question is, how do you come up with such an idea? Does it start with the colors, a performance idea, the form, uh, or something else? Okay, you talk about uh, Balata number two. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, well, that was um, another period of my life uh, after having for a while worked on only of uh, on noises, on movements, or on um, things that are usually uh, outside the the normal stuff uh, elements of uh, music used in a yeah. concert of classic uh, music and. And uh, for me, it was quite difficult to enter again uh, the world of uh, the so of sound. But the solution uh, was uh, made uh, for me with a small piece for piano uh, that was uh, using the C major scale only, uh, note after note, uh, to to have a system, as, mm -hmm. a system as. Uh, easiest as possible like uh, in fact uh, the C major scale that go up and down so that was the first step and uh, to 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 really work with uh, with the pitches and uh, with the uh, frequencies um, instead of elements like uh, that were uh, more uh, I mean, noisy or and uh, after that, uh, the second step was to uh, work like uh, with different scales, uh, like uh, having uh, three small, uh, small pieces, like a triptych with a um, uh, first piece on a C major scale, for example, a second piece on a G major scale, uh, and one other on a D major scale uh, with different elements or uh, attitudes. Uh, and after that, uh, I worked on my first uh, cello concerto, um, Ogni Gesto d'Amore, and uh, working on the, this piece that had to be at the beginning uh, really extreme, only with uh, the sound of the turning of the pages and uh, a gun shot at the beginning. Uh, that was where I finally... Um, conceived the whole form of the piece uh, based only on a chromatic scale that was going down and down and down, uh, note by note. Uh, so I, I think it was starting in F sharp. And uh, so the second uh, part was in F, in uh, E and so on, until uh, uh, again at the end, uh, the F sharp note as uh, an element, uh, as a uh, bass, bass, or 
uh, as a, um, uh, um, an harmonic field on, on which working on around. Um, and uh, the first three balladas I wrote uh, were doing the same actually. So the first one was for uh, organ and uh, it was starting in C and uh, the first uh, three minutes like that uh, are uh, based on a, a pedal of uh, C uh, and then uh, it go down, so down, down, down. And at the end we find again uh, the, the note of the beginning. And uh, the same is for uh, the second ballata and the third one that it's for piano and uh, and uh, ensemble. Uh, the second one uh, while is uh, only ensemble, while the first one is with organ. Uh, and uh, well, uh, it's kind of uh, of course this is the structure, basically the structure, but. Uh, uh, inside this structure, you you will find uh, that uh, the most important thing is the way you 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 connect one episode to the other, and they are very frequently in contrast. Um, sometimes uh, one note uh, of this chromatic scale it's very short, and then you have a longer period based on the next one. Or uh, one it's, uh, ep episode uh, on one note is uh, very fast and uh, pianissimo and the next one it's uh, strong and deep and uh, things like that. Uh, and I tried uh, with the orchestration to have uh, different colors that uh, allow me to to use uh, also some material that it's uh, more classical but with this kind of uh, colors i hope to 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 give us some uh, some different uh, vision of the material we know and basically yeah, that's it yeah <laughs> yeah um the, it's interesting because i mean uh, i always like when i hear your music i feel like uh the, the whole process starts with the color, but what you're describing is that it kind of starts with the peach. So the peach is kind of the core uh, structure uh, where you where you start the piece. Kind of did I understand that correctly? In these yeah, I, I, I mean, uh, the f when I compose, I always try to have a, a closed form. So uh, with uh, few elements, uh, as few as possible on just one single idea that is developed and uh, find uh, the solution inside. Uh, and that's something that allow me to be free then to find the colors and to work on w with the freedom that otherwise I couldn't have. So, I mean, if you were to say like how like the first step is you come up with this uh, movement or with like the, the little elements that you want to then progress in, in your piece. So I'm, I'm asking, how do you come up with those little elements? I mean, are they are there melodies? Are they just colors? I mean, what what are usually how, how is your process for finding those little <coughs> Yeah, I, I I think uh, there is a kind of uh, the beginning of each piece of a willing uh, to express something, an energy that you have inside and you have to to put it out, and mm -hmm. then after that, of course, uh, if you use a chromatic scale like I have done for those pieces that go down, uh, there is a meaning. It was a kind of. Uh, feeling of uh, I mean uh, depression in a way and that was uh, going down and down and down and uh, the the idea was a consequent situation from starting from my feeling and uh, on that um, all the elements are constructed usually uh, going around the chromatic scale or on the um, on the spectrum on the on, on the chords that you can have on a note for example i don't think it's maybe this, the first ballata or the third one they use a chromatic scale for the bass that go down and for uh, up uh, for the upper part a chromatic scale that go up so very easily and uh, inside um, 
well, when I compose, I try to fix my mind on an element, and if I don't need it to change, I stay on that. Um, and, and that's it. I mean, and then I have my my colors, my elements that, well, very frequently this kind of wind that come from a buzzing bow, no? this uh, kind of uh, evolution of a uh, rombo. Uh, that for me it's very important because it gives more moments. It's like a starting uh, br breathing. I mean, uh, and from the breath, uh, from this uh, sound of wind, the wind bring uh, the other uh, sounds that born inside uh, inside it. I mean, it's funny because uh, you also use this bird whistle, like the little birds, a lot in your yeah. music. Also, the kazoo, if I'm uh, not mistaken. Yeah, sometimes, yeah. Yeah, and and I'm like, uh, I'm curious. How did you like stumble upon those kind of instruments? Because not everybody uses them. So. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, the beginning also uh, when I was uh, composing uh, more with the noise of the wood of the instrument that I were knocking and things like that. Uh, it happened to me uh, that they asked it to write in Japan for Japan for Osokawa um, something for flute recorder for recorder. And uh, so, uh, starting from this idea of uh, wood, of the flute, uh, suddenly in my mind uh, was a uh, space for uh, Vivaldi, uh, and uh, and from Vivaldi to the birds, you know, for the four season, and uh, for the fact that I am an organist. Uh, it happened that uh, you know in the organ, Italian organs also you have this register of uh, of uh, beards that you can have uh, usignolo with putting some uh, some uh, water inside the cage uh, to have this this kind of song. What is it called? Uh, usignolo. It's a register that uh, mm -hmm. without any pitch that you put uh, on and. Uh, they say that it works better with wine, but I think so. it's okay also with water. And uh, so you put water in the pipe? Is that not in the works? pipe? In a, in a mechanism? Then uh, of course it's a system to to make movements inside. Uh, it's the same uh, thing that when you have the beard, uh, you know this uh, in a kind of. Uh, uh, ceramic thing that you breathe inside with water and uh, it gives you the sound of, uh, um, of a beard. Then, so from this kind of baroque elements come uh, the idea of uh, working with uh, uh, beard skull that in fact are like pi organ pipes. You know, uh, the very small high register is like one, a pipe of one feet. Um, in, yeah. So, uh, I mean, there are movements in contemporary music because you come from organ and you were talking about these scales and tonalities. Uh, and um, in, in the contemporary uh, music, there are people who have a lot of aversion towards using tonal constellations, let's say. You, on the other hand, in your Requiem, for example, you say that you even take harmonics from earlier compositions. And uh, I was wondering, uh, do you think it makes sense for you uh, to use such, like, where do you think it makes sense to use this kind of m earlier harmonics, which might sound more tonal? Because for me, for example, sometimes uh, the works which include um, a bit of too much tonality in the sense of like a major or minor one, they feel kind of awkward or out of place but with your work it always seems that it's proper that it's there so I was just wondering um, what do you think like how do you uh, get along with with like tonality in the music because there are really strict composers who like hate it they hate anything which resembles a, a tonal constellation I, I think you have to be honest with yourself on what you want uh, of course uh, you know uh, I've done a kind of land between for many many years from something that I was loving too much uh, this kind of uh, way of thinking uh, it come uh, out from, uh, from, from, from uh, yeah the war 
uh, and uh, you have many generations uh, like uh, Boulez, uh, like uh, Berio and so on for, for a while. Uh, also Berio was uh, against uh, some Puccini things and so uh, now I don't care. I mean, I, I, I had my, my period when I was younger where I was really fighting against uh, the material and now, I, from one side, I don't have any more energy to go against myself uh, as I was doing. Of course, it was still me, but uh, now, I, 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 if I want something, uh, I, 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 I'm more natural and I feel like comfortable with everything I need to do what I want. Uh, one other thing is that I don't believe anymore uh, so much in... Uh, uh, this vision of the, you know, uh, you have always to find something new to go on. Of course, it's necessary, but it's not, I mean, it's, you know, to listen to something new is an emotion. But there are other emotions, it's not the only one. It's an emotion, and then uh, you have other. And also, to, now, for example, what I prefer uh, is the music and uh, the composers that... Uh, uh, th that uh, cheat on me. I, I listen to something, uh, see, thinking that it's uh, okay. Something that I have listened already, that I know, that I know how it works. And then suddenly I understand. No, what the fuck? I mean, he's going to. He has done everything to to put me in a situation where I was feeling like uh, comfortable, and I was saying to myself, "Okay, I know this." And no, that's not. Uh, and that there is opening a. Uh, uh, something uh, uh, really stronger because of that, because it, it was uh, uh, bringing me in a, in a direction that I was uh, feeling like uh, already, I mean, new. I, so this kind of, uh, of when, when I'm, uh, you know, astonished because I was uh, like thinking of what's, what is this? I'm superior, I know. Huh? And then, no, uh, I, I understand something that he was doing it because he was aware of uh, the fact that uh, doing that, uh, I, I was feeling in, in this way, so I'm charmed. Um, let's say, and then other things. I feel like uh, we can have a, a first degree of uh, listening that could be open to also people that are not... Uh, uh, I mean, in, inside only the kind of listen that we can have, uh, working, uh, listening and studying, uh, the, for example, the first Tokhausen, uh, the Klavierstuck uh, with these four. Uh, we can have, uh, from one side, also something, uh, you know, that leads you in the time and inside it, be, behind it, many, many layers that are for uh, people that want to find the other inside the music. You know, uh, I think it's possible uh, now. So I'm trying to do to work on this direction. I'm in a way that you have, uh, uh, have something that um, yeah, uh, easy for the listener or uh, also uh, how to say uh, sincere. Yeah, since in, well, yes, for me, yes, like that, and then at the same time to be aware of that because the problem is it happen when you are not uh, uh, when you sh you are not able to show that you are doing it because you want it because you 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 know what you are doing basically okay uh yeah it's complex but uh, i feel like uh, enough of uh, this kind of uh, tribal situation where composer mm, uh, you know work to and fight to 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 defend a, a kind of garden from the others a kind of aesthetic and uh, it's just a question of uh, that good for the um, anthropologue people <laughs> okay yeah um, well, you, you said that you, you are an organist, and I knew that, and um, that you had your phases with this like strict Berio Boulet phase. So I'm curious, how did you come to contemporary music? What, what like, got you interested in the field? Mm, so when I was uh, 
12 like that I was already composing uh, and I couldn't I mean you know I was studying piano and uh, I used to put other voices for example on the pieces that I was studying uh, like uh, in Beethoven and things like that and then uh, then I listened to Prokofiev and then I was trying also to 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 make something similar that for me was really, I remember I was swearing a lot listening to this. And then um, something happened that it was a tape of uh, with contemporary music that uh, my uncle had at home without any name on that. I discovered that many years after that was uh, from one side there was uh, uh, John Cage and I was laughing uh, a lot listening to it uh, from voice. And the other side was uh, um, Die Temporum Fine Commedia of um, Karl Orff. A wonderful piece, his last uh, piece with many, many interesting things that I think uh, was very important for me. And uh, after that, uh, I, uh, I tried many different uh, okay, elements and uh, I had a tomb of because uh, for um, uh, um, my birthday, a friend of my mother sent me a, a, a disc of uh, Mascagni Nerone, an awful opera that I didn't open and uh, go, went to the to the shop to change it with uh, some uh, new music. And there was uh, Sharino, Bussotti, amongst others that were for me very, very important. Um, then I met Sharino and uh, studying with him was uh, really crucial for my studying and for my for you know, to open my mind also to and also boost optimism. So how did Sharino influence your music? You think how was it to work with him? How does he work? I I uh, well I think uh, because uh, that was the possibility to make theater with few elements, because uh, he was able to create a theater with only a flute, you know, uh, like uh, come vengono prodotti gli incantesimi, a flute that doesn't sound like a flute. And uh, for me, uh, it was like uh, really to to have a theater with with nothing. And uh, now that I, uh, you know, uh, that was the most thing. And the other was the form, to uh, the the control of uh, a form that Sharino is so I mean, incredibly able to do to to control uh, the structure of the world piece. That was that were the the two very important uh, things for me. More than, I mean, the fact that uh, the sound uh, is uh, different or, I don't know. Um, you know what, I mean, uh, y well, of course, you, you know that like in, in earlier music times, you could kind of hear a geographical color of the music in Europe. For example, we had this English product, we had a, a French one. Do you think there's such a thing now that we have like this Italian sound from the region? Or do you think it's just simply with whom you study that uh, you uh, kind uh, of... No, 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 of course it's completely that. I mean, uh, music is a wonderful way to discover uh, your roots. And uh, of course I, I can say that uh, if you listen to my music, it's clear that I come from Tuscany for me and that I went to study in French. So all the colors, all the taste of the timbral uh, elements, uh, fusion and things come uh, more from Paris. And uh, okay, while uh, the kind of uh, feeling uh, come from Puccini, but uh, that's you know I, I'm I'm born here at twenty kilometers from uh, Luca. The the way of feeling uh, is like that. You know, we are really it's. It's more for thanks to the to the clima, climatic thing that you have the sun the the the, the, the sea and uh, you know and then uh, it happened that you you live the life in a different way and your music go in a different direction than uh, in another country and that's um, the most interesting thing for me to to study I mean where I come from uh, with the music. Well, I mean, I'm then curious because it's like a 
country with a lot of traditional values in music. How do people get along with contemporary music? Like in Italy, you think compared to Austria or Germany, or how is the... Ah, uh, that's the, a shame uh, in the sense that uh, our tradition was complete, completely fucked up uh, Uh, because of uh, educational system, because of the fascist and, uh, you know, the school, uh, uh, because the, um, what was opera uh, that was really Italy. Uh, Italy, you know, we, we are known. And if someone continuing studying Italian is for opera, I mean, uh, okay, for opera and for uh, of course uh, also uh, artists like uh, Michelangelo and Raffaello and so on for, for visual arts but not so much for literature after Dante um, you know we had not uh, kind of uh, great writers like uh, in uh, French um, Dumas, Hugo we have uh, Alessandro Manzoni but uh, well he was a good uh, writer but I mean, that's not the thing in Italy uh, that you know. You know, Verdi, Puccini, uh, Rossini, uh, and so on, you know, and the music. Uh, and n our system of education, educational system was uh, a kind of uh, copy of the French one, uh, while our sensibility was different, more binded to, to, to the opera. And... Uh, That was not, uh, I mean, uh, uh, you know, we had uh, Croce Gentile that were organizing the, the Italian school uh, during the fascism uh, period, and still uh, we are there. I mean, so uh, nothing uh, has done in the school uh, for music, and uh, the opera, uh, you know, was forgotten from one side you have uh, Sanremo with the uh, pop music that it's really sometimes awful and it come from uh, the idea of arias and from the other you have uh, nono and uh, all the kind of uh, I mean uh, research elements that for uh, forget the other side so i think now it's really time to find a way to bind them together again <coughs> and uh, find uh, uh, with a fusion of uh, those elements that uh, were too long time uh, split okay mm. that's the thing okay. and uh, if i may uh, yeah you know One other thing, because I'm sometimes really pissed off <laughs> about, uh, you know, the fact that someone think that, for example, Puccini or Verdi are uh, mostly in Germany. I mean, they consider like Puccini a composer of a second, uh, you know, style. I mean, degree or oh, Verdi sometimes. Or, but Puccini was the best uh, concretization of uh, 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 what is a com it, an Italian composer that it's not what is a French composer okay Debussy was searching from something and uh, I mean uh, uh, Berg was, uh, was searching for another thing Puccini was searching for uh, something different it was Italian and it was the best of it And you can't ask him to to be the composer that uh, explore uh, I mean uh, things that are not part of his culture, and and I don't feel that is uh, worst or is another thing, but it's still the best that it could be. Mm, well, another thing that it's kind of relevant that I wanted to ask you. Well, you of course consume other um, forms of like art form, and. Do you do you borrow anything in, like from literature, from films? Like, wh what are your favorite films, or something that you say maybe have affected you in in your music? Are there such things? I um, very frequently I mean, uh, uh, cry when I see films by Charlie Chaplin, for example, but <laughs> that's without words. So, it kind of, uh, and uh, otherwise. Uh, Uh, 
for literature. Mm. Paintings. I don't know. No, no, but you... what do you mean? For my music or? Uh... Yeah, sometimes, for example, I'm, I was like once fascinated, like Pasolini, after seeing the, the, the Salo, like I was like, I, it, it kind of had an effect in my music for oh. some reason. Oh, yeah. But I mean, I don't know, sometimes you get kind of inputs, you know, from different things around you. And I was just wondering if there's anything concrete that has influenced you in a sense. Yeah. Um... Wine, <laughs> a lot of wine, cocktails and things like that. <laughs> That's uh, very, very <laughs> strong. Um, and uh, for, for the film, uh, yeah, Pasolini, I, 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 there are many things that I like also so strong, like uh, Salo. And there are two other, um, I mean, how you say uh, filmmakers that yeah. unfortunately don't work uh, anymore together Cipri and Maresco uh, they had done uh, two wonderful films uh, one is um, uh, Totò che visse due volte and the other is Lo zio di Brooklyn they are very strong and uh, acid and really uh, but uh, I, I I love their their words and the 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 the, the things that they they have done. Um, and then uh, okay, paintings uh, also I, I I like a, a lot of. Uh, for example, in this period, uh, I, I I love Boldini. Boldini for me is a painter that. Uh, and uh, the, also there, now you see, it's like uh, many, many people, and also Umberto Eco was uh, using uh, Boldini to, uh, to, to show what kitsch is. But for me, it's not. Uh, Boldini was a great genius, and genius like, um, like uh, Modigliani. But Modigliani is uh, if it's so important i think it's also a question compared to boldini is a question of uh, sociological elements like uh, was working uh, uh, for another kind of society and uh, i mean uh, other questions that uh, but uh, boldini uh, is the same you, you you if you see one uh, painting you understand that it's him and uh, yeah, it's, you know, it's clear there is something. Um, another thing that I wanted to ask, you also mentioned depression and also in an interview about your Requiem, you talk about the presence of death in, in your music. I mean, I, I relate to that because I'm also constantly thinking about death. I even have a piece, it's called Euthanasia. So um, it's like a more personal thing. Like, what is it with death that fascinates you? Like, how, why? Like, is it some kind of existential depression that you... Uh, yeah, I, I, uh, well, um, I think uh, I described this uh, many times. It was uh, my the death of my grandfather uh, when I was uh, very young, eight eight years old, and my grandmother, uh, Sardinian widows, that was knocking on the coffin and shouting, uh, um, trying to give life to this uh, inanimate object that uh, you know was uh, so important for her life and uh, i think uh, all of my life was in this uh, kind of uh, trying to understand uh, this moment uh, where uh, i couldn't really give a name of what i was seeing uh, probably it come from that most yeah and um does it kind of are you scared of it or don't you like you don't still understand it i mean no, you know, to, to, to continue, everyone has to find a, a, a way to, a solution with the fact that you have to die. And for me, of course, uh, I have no children, I have this wonderful dog there, but, um, you know, um, my, my music is a way to, to close circles. You know, each opera is uh, something that I live and uh, trying to, to, 
to put some of what I'm living on that in order to to uh, to continue. And the, the same thing uh, with the music. Uh, it happened when you listen to composer that are not anymore there. Not for the single composer, because for the for the epo- for for all the world people that were living with him and uh, the whole world that was there. Uh, you know, I think uh, I'm working uh, and I'm writing opera because uh, it's an instrument that is not anymore present. It's a death instrument. It's something that is, uh, you know, uh, it's so melancholic for me to to use uh, something, an instrument like an opera, uh, an opera that it was made for another kind of society. It's already crazy. It's like a, uh, that body that you try to put life on. And with an instrument, a modern instrument, uh, I can imagine to work on, but you don't have the same uh, uh, strong, uh, uh, deep uh, uh, fact that it's not anymore. You know, that's why I, 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 I like to work on operas. Okay. Um, then I, I pretty much have everything that I had, and I, I want to thank you a lot for doing the interview. I don't want to take.